And there's Facebook. Hello, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here. Here for my uh, weekly prophetic word. Just get another recording set up. And there we go. All right. How's everybody doing? God bless all of you that are joining me live. And God bless all of you that are watching this on a replay. As usual, have a great word from the Lord because God never runs out, man. He's always fresh. That's why the prophetic is so important. That's why the rhema word of God is so important to find out what is God saying now. Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> have a word of prayer and we're going to jump right in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your powerful word. Oh, God, thank you for access to your presence, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we just want to thank you for Jesus and all that you have given to us through him. And we just want to thank you, Jesus, for giving your life, for reaching down and catching the hand of man and reaching up and catching the hand of God and unifying both in your body, O oh Lord, because nobody could do that but you. So it's just an honor and a privilege to be a part of your kingdom. So I ask you to breathe through me, Lord. Speak through me. Uh, forgive me for anything by thought, word, and deed where I've sinned against you, O oh God, and wash me clean. Breathe through me. Think through me. Uh, speak through me, O oh God. I surrender everything, my mouth, my brain, my lips, my hands, my tongue that you might be glorified through this broadcast and that the saints might be edified and that the demons might be terrified and the unbelievers might be challenged to believe in you. So have your way. Glorify yourself and let us hear what the Spirit says to the church. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen and amen. <clears throat> now, you know, I'm on every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So you can catch me right now on uh, Periscope on Facebook Live, and then uh, the replay is on Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouTube. And I may uh, set up YouTube live streaming. I'm still debating as to whether or not we're going to do that. All right, so <clears throat> today's prophetic word from the Lord is fruitfulness. It's fruitfulness. Oh, man, it's fruitfulness. Okay, so I have a prophetic word to release uh, but I want to read the scripture first. We're going to break down the scripture, and then I want to release that prophetic word. Okay? We're going to go to the book of John, chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8. The book of John, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? That's the fourth book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, this John is not John the Baptist. John the Baptist was Jesus' natural first cousin because Jesus' mom, Mary, was sisters with Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mom. That's not this John. This is the disciple of John. This is the apostle John. He wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the epistles, and the book of Revelation. That's this John. He's the one that laid his head on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. Okay? That's this John. When the Lord was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took Peter, James, and John with him. That's this John, okay? So this John was in the inner circle of Christ with the three that he took with him on, you know, some of his most intense and private moments. They were also on the Mount of Transfiguration. If you don't know what that is, uh, they were up on the mountain and the Lord... Well, just decline that phone call. And the Lord, uh, his garments turned white. He let some of his heavenly glory shine through. So he stopped looking fully human and he let some of his divinity come through. And John said the white that his garments turned was a white that's not on earth. Like we couldn't bleach clothes or whiten them strong enough to get that kind of white. And then out of the shadow stepped Moses and Elijah, two Old Testament prophets. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible and Elijah was the great miracle worker. Well, they stepped out of the shadows and Peter, James and John saw them talking to Jesus on the mountain. That's the Mount of Transfiguration experience. So this John saw that. Okay? Just to give you a little background. So John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. And by the way, the reason I say that is because there are many versions, many translations of the Bible now. Uh, as you may or may not know, the original text is written in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. And then there's different dialects, especially with the Greek. So... Uh, there's different translations, so that's why I always let you know which one I'm reading, okay? All right, so John 15, verses 1 through 8, out of the New King James Version. 
I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Oh, wow. <laughs> I could spend a year on them eight verses. Okay, but we're just going to be brief because I don't have a year right now. Today's prophetic word is fruitfulness. So we want to look at what the Lord said. The Lord said, I am the true vine. Stop. Why would Jesus need to say that he's the true vine? He said that he's the true vine to indicate and separate himself from the fact that there are false vines out there. A vine in the sense of someone trying to pretend to be the source of life. Some religion, some theology, some perspective, some philosophy that tries to tell you how to live and how to become the best version of yourself and how to maximize your potential. Jesus says, I'm the true vine. In other words, the only person that can help you become the best version of yourself is Jesus Christ. The only person that can actually give you the life you're looking for is Jesus Christ, okay? And everything else is a false vine. Everything else is <clears throat> something that cannot give you the life that you're looking for. That's why the Lord said he's the true vine, okay? Then he says, and my father is the vine dresser. Stop. So the Lord shows us the role of the Father in relation to Jesus and us. So Jesus is the vine, and God the Father is the vine dresser. Oh, uh, King James says husbandman. Uh, so it means the one that keeps the garden. That's what that means. The vine dresser is one that trims the plants, keeps the garden, uh, you know, harvests the fruit, that kind of thing, that makes sure that the plants are growing and kept safe and all that. Then he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. <clears throat> now let me throw this in while I'm on it. I'm so tired of uh, watching and listening to teaching that fractures the unity of Scripture. Matthew 4.4 4 says, mankind shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You can't throw out parts of the word of God just because you don't like what they say. Okay? So Jesus said that if you are a Christian, but you are not bearing fruit, eventually God the Father is going to remove you. And that's why you see some believers and their lives are drying up. That's why you see some churches, some denominations, some religious situations, and they're just drying up. You know why? That also lines up with what the Lord said in Revelation 2, that if you didn't return to your first love, he was going to remove your candlestick. It says clearly right here, that he says, every branch in me, that's Christians, that does not bear fruit. That means that if you're born again, if you're a born again believer, you're supposed to be bearing fruit. You're supposed to be growing in Christ. You're supposed to be doing something for all that God has invested in us through Christ. We're supposed to be become fruit bearing. And Jesus says right here that if you don't bear fruit, that Father God is going to take you away. Okay, that should explain some things to you. My pastor this, just this morning was talking about being consistent and being stable and how some people jump on stuff with God when it's popular and how some people believe God when it's easy. But here the Lord is saying that if you are not bearing fruit, because bearing fruit takes time, you have to hang in there with God. You have to learn how to be faithful to him as he is faithful to us. And, and Jesus said that if you're a Christian but you're not bearing fruit, Eventually, Father God, go move you out the way. Okay? Then he says, in every branch that bears fruit, <clears throat> he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, 
If you don't know what pruning is, if you know anything about gardening, you know what pruning is. But if you don't know, just in case, pruning is where when you look at your plant, if there are little branches in the plant that are dead branches, they need to be cut off. Or if they're infected, especially, they need to be cut off. Because what will happen is if you have a dead branch on your plant, or if you have a part of the plant that's infected, if you don't cut it off, it's going to infect the root of the plant, and it can ruin the whole thing. So when he says every branch that bears fruit, so you're growing as a Christian, you're in the will of God, you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, but the Lord said, Father is going to prune you. What that means in a practical sense, because you know I like to give practical examples, it means that God is going to start to cut things out of your life that are not helping you be fruitful which will almost always include relationships that aren't helping you. Uh, thought patterns, if you have self-defeating thought patterns, God the Father want to cut, wants to cut that out and show you how to think in a productive way. Uh, habits, if you have poor habits with your money, with your diet, with your words, with your time, with your, your sleep schedule, whatever. If you've got bad habits, God the Father wants to cut those habits out and then give you some new disciplines so you can continue to bear more fruit. So the Lord says that we can expect to be pruned because that's the same thing you would do to a plant in the natural. Is that if it's bearing fruit, you don't want anything that's dead or anything that's infected hanging off of it. Now when you think about it, that makes all the sense in the world. So sometimes <clears throat> we're unaware of what's going on with Father God's pruning process. Because sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's, it's confusing when you're in it. But when God is cutting things out of your life, let him have his way. Even though it may hurt, even though it may be confusing, even though you might not like it, let him have his way. Okay? Because Jesus said what he's actually doing, he's trying to put you in a position where you can bear more fruit. So some people, you got to say goodbye to them. Sometimes you have to move out of a city. Sometimes you have to move out of relationships. Sometimes... You may have been holding on to, let's say, anger or hurt for so long that you start to say, the fact that I got hurt justifies me being this way. Okay, Father, not, Father God is not just going to sit on that forever. <laughs> okay? So if you're carrying your pain or whatever, but eventually Father God is going to call you to healing and he's going to call you to forgiveness to tell you to let go of that thing that you're holding on to because it's hindering you from being as productive as possible. For example, <clears throat> okay, it's coming to me prophetically. There are some daughters out there. Uh, one of you is named Karen. There's some daughters out there looking at me right now. You need to reconcile with your dad. The pain that you're feeling and the confusion that you're feeling and you can't find a boyfriend, you can't keep a husband, you can't get your life stable. Do you know why? It's because you're not right with Heavenly Father, but you're also not right with your biological father. Mm -hmm. And you felt the Spirit of the Lord moving around in there. You've been resisting the pruning. God, Father God is trying to cut that bitterness out. He's trying to teach you forgiveness. Not saying that what your dad did was okay, but saying that you don't have to stay in jail and you don't have to stay hurt and you don't have to stay bitter or angry for the rest of your life because of things that happened in your childhood or things that happened long ago. You may even be able to reconcile with your dad and build a good relationship now even if you had a bad one in the past. Okay, so that came to me prophetically, so I want to be sure to reach that, to release that. Okay, then it says, you are already clean, verse 3, John 15, 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Lord have mercy. I told you I could spend a year in these verses. <clears throat> the Lord says that we're clean because of the word he spoke. He was talking to his disciples, but of course that applies to us. That's why you have to be in the Word of God every day because that's what cleanses you. Do you understand now that if you only hear the Word on Sunday when you go to church, especially if you don't go to church faithfully, do you understand that's the only, only cleansing flow you got for that week? That's seven days in a week. And you go to church for two to three hours on Sunday, then you get that one cleansing flow. Then you struggle the other six days. That's why you're struggling because you're not in the Word. He said you are already clean because of the Word which I have spoken to you. So we have to develop daily discipline to get in God's word. Read the Bible, listen to teaching, uh, tapes, videos, 
CDs, DVDs, whatever works for you. Plenty of teaching on YouTube. Okay, but we have to get exposed to the word of God every day so we can be and stay clean. That's how you get clean. If you're struggling as a Christian with living a clean life, the only way to do that is to get under the word. We can't do it. We can't do it on our own. We cannot clean ourselves. Okay, it's only the word of God that brings the cleansing. Then he says, verse four, abide in me and I in you. Why would the Lord say abide? Because it's a choice. <clears throat> Lord have mercy, once again, <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing teaching that suggests that all of the blessings of God are automatic because you're saved. That is not the truth. You have to walk with God. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to daily spend time with God. That's what the Lord means by abide. It means stay in my will, stay in my words, stay in obedience. Live the life I want you to live. You hear me say it all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't just accept Jesus as Savior. You have to also accept him as Lord. You can't just take his saving work on the cross and say, well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven when I die. Thanks. You have to also accept him as Lord. Let him be the Lord over your life and go to him every day and surrender your life, your time, your gifts, your decisions. And let the Lord lead you and guide you and tell you what to do. That's how you abide. You stay in the word. Stay in the scriptures. You stay listening to teaching tapes. You spend time with God. You spend time worshiping him. That's how you, and then you obey. Because all that's not going to do you any good if you're still doing what you want to do. <laughs> you have to, HBO, you hear me say it all the time. You got to hear the word. You got to believe the word. But then you must obey the word. That's how you abide in Christ. Okay. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. That's pretty clear, isn't it? <coughs> if you're struggling as a Christian and you don't know why, it's because you're not abiding in Christ because you can't do it on your own. You can't live. I like the way Pastor Joseph Prince says it. Pastor Joseph Prince says the Christian life is not difficult. It's impossible. Nobody can live it but Christ. That's spot on. <laughs> Excuse me. You can't be a Christian on your own. Jesus is the Christ. He's the vine. He's the righteous one. He's the holy one. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And then you have to stay attached to him, and he will give you the grace. He will give you the power. He will give you enablement to live the way you need to live. All that comes from him. We can't do it on our own. Okay? But it says the Lord uses a very plain and visceral picture here. If you snap a branch off of a vine, what's going to happen? The branch cannot bear fruit of itself. If the branch is over here, detached from the vine, there's no fruit, there's no apples, there's no grapes, there's no pears coming off that branch because it's not attached to the vine. And the Lord says, that's the way our relationship is to him. We have to stay attached to him if we're going to be fruit bearing. Again, I think that's pretty plain. But once again, to give you a contrast, that's why people that are CMEs, <laughs> people that are CMEs that only come to church three times a year, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, CMEs, that's why people that do that, that's why they, they struggle to get a breakthrough. That's why they struggle with their faith. And, and sometimes when you live like that, the devil can hit you so hard you weren't ready. You weren't prepared for it because you didn't spend your time abiding in Christ. Because if you spend your time walking with God, God will get you ready so that no matter what comes your way, you can overcome. But if you are just, you know, inconsistent and in and out and up and down and going to church when you feel like it and studying the Bible every now and then, you don't have any kind of consistent walk with God. Christians like that always struggle and they don't know why. Because you have to abide. Remember, I told you that the word is always its own explanation. The Lord says you got to abide. OK, I am the vine. You are the branches. He keeps repeating the metaphor. I am the vine. You are the branches. I am the vine. You are the branches. The Lord is trying to explain the nature of our relationship. I'm the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. Now, that's an absolute statement. OK, the Lord says in the bottom part of verse five, for without me, you can do nothing. Do you want to know what that looks like? <clears throat> Just don't get in the word for one day. Just don't pray for one day. 
Just don't worship for one day. In less than 24 hours, that old nature, your old self, will be back. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> you'll be angry. You'll be sniping. You'll be snapping at people. You'll have self-control issues. You'll get a taste back for all the stuff that you used to do if you just get out to word one day. It's the most amazing thing. It don't take but one day. One day of not being filled with the word and not being filled with the Holy Ghost and all that of that old fleshly nature, you have to keep it under every day. And the Lord says, without him, we can do nothing. We can't do it. You can't cast demons out in your name. You can't make your money work right on your own. You can't manage your time on your own. You can't manage your relationships on your own. And sometimes we have to live a 20 and a 30 and a 40 and a 50 years before we surrender to God. Because we keep trying and we keep trying and we keep trying. And then the whole thing come crashing down. And that's finally when we come crawling back to the Lord, talking about, Lord, I surrender. Okay? And the reason we do that is because we're still not convinced <laughs> that we need Jesus. Because once you understand that you need Jesus, you are at his feet every day, man. Once you understand that you can't do it without him, then you're, you're, you're at his feet every day. But until you learn that, you're going to be trying to do it on your own. And that's when you're going to keep crashing and burning until you understand that he's the vine, you're the branch. You must stay attached to him for your life to work. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Oh my goodness. Now the Lord just warned you what happens to inconsistent Christians. That's why you hear me say it all the time. I'm so tired of hearing partial truth. I'm so tired of hearing people just preach the blessing side. <laughs> That's not the way the Bible is written. The Bible is written to show you the blessing and the cursing. The Bible is written to show you the life and the death. The Bible is written to show you both good and evil. To show you that you have a choice. And you have to choose. And so the Lord said that if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. <clears throat> you've seen it happen. You may not have known that that's what you were looking at, but you've seen people that at one time were on fire for God and they loved the Lord and they was serving my pastor just preached about that this morning. They was on fire for God and they was loving the Lord and blah, 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 blah. And then something happened and all of a sudden they just detached. Stop praying, stop speaking in tongues, stop moving in prophetic. Stop having daily quiet time with God. Stop coming to church. They, they, just, they just disappear. And you know what happens to your life when you do that? You start drying up. You start withering. It never fails. Sometimes you can see Christians like that and you see them and they look older. They've aged hard. They've aged harder than they should have because when you detach from Jesus, you start to wither. And then it says, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. What does fire represent in this context? It represents consuming. Your life gets consumed as a Christian when you don't stay attached to Jesus. You have to stay attached to the Lord if you want to live. If you don't want to live, then just do what you want to do, and then you'll die. And the Lord just showed you, because um, you can die slowly. He said you're going to wither. You're going to wither. Um, this is what happens. Wait. There's a man out there named Michael. That's why your marriage is withering. Your marriage is withering because y'all need to abide in Christ. You and your wife, you need to abide in Christ. And the reason that y'all are struggling is because you're trying to do it on your own and you haven't stayed attached to Jesus. So I had to release that. That's what happens to our lives, lives as believers. And it's, it's really painful to watch. It's painful to experience if you let it happen to you. And it's painful to watch when you've seen people that were once spirit-filled, once in the way, once full of the word and full of the Holy Ghost, and then their lives start drying up. It's painful, okay? But the Lord already told you that's what will happen. And so as a Christian, again, if you're in the scriptures, you can't be surprised that when you get away from Jesus, you start to wither, okay? And your life starts drying up. And then the Lord says you're, you're going to get thrown into the fire, and you're going to get consumed, Okay? So the next time you see that, understand that that's what happens to us when we don't stay in fellowship with the Lord. Okay? Then verse 7, 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Wow, what does the Lord just give us? The Lord just gave us a blank check. You missed it. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now there's a submission part. There's you being submitted to the word. Don't skip that part. Don't be listening to these people that teach you, you can do whatever you want, because that's not what the Lord said. That's another thing I'm tired of, is this doctrine that's been out for a while that says you can live any kind of way you want to and still get the blessing of God. That's not what the Lord said. What the Lord says, if you, and that first word is if, that means you have a choice. That means it's not automatic. It doesn't automatically happen. The Lord said, if is your choice, you abide in me, and, and's a conjunctive word, which means that has to happen and this has to happen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, that means you're full of the word, you're living the word. You're not just running your mouth, you're not just having lip service, you're actually full of the word of God. And once you get full of the word of God, you will live it out. So we have to abide in him and his words have to abide in us. Then you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Wow. Jesus just wrote us a blank check. He said, when we abide in him and his words abide in us, there's a submission part that we can ask whatever we want and it shall be done for us. So let me ask you a question. What do you want from the Lord? What do you want? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to buy a home? Do you want to travel? What do you want? What do you want? The Lord said, if we abide in him, and his words abide in us. We can ask what we desire and it shall be done for you. That's a promise. It shall be done for you. What a promise. But let me hasten to say, he ain't talking about CMEs. He ain't talking about people that come to church three times a year. He ain't talking about people that don't pay their tithes and offerings. Remember, the condition of the promise is that you have to be in fellowship with him and his words have to be abiding in you. So you can't talk about how much you love the Lord and you ain't paying no tithes and no offerings and you're not doing any alms for the poor. You're just running your mouth. Okay? This promise is not for you. So you can try and try and try to get stuff out of God if you want to. The conditions of the promise is you have to abide in him and his words have to abide in you. Then you ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. I always like to make that clear because there's so much teaching out there that keeps saying you can just do whatever you want because you're saved. That is incorrect. Okay? And then it says, by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Wow. I told you. I could spend a year in these verses. By this, my Father is glorified. Now, when the Lord says, this is the way the Father is glorified, then that means exactly what he said, that this is the way the Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. Stop. If you are a Christian and it is your goal to glorify the Father, the Lord spent all this time telling us how it happens, that we have to abide in him and his word has to abide in us and we have to allow the Father to prune us. And then we can bear much fruit, and that's what glorifies God. So that means if you're living a life that's bearing much fruit, that Father is pleased with that, and he's glorified when he sees all the fruit that's coming out of your life. That also means, the converse means, that if you are living a life and you are not a fruit-bearing Christian, you are not actually glorifying God. So that means if we're on that other side, we're not glorifying God, we're not bearing fruit. We need to repent and we need to get back in fellowship with the Lord and we need to let his words abide in us so we can become those fruit-bearing Christians. And then the last thing he says is, so you will be my disciples. Disciple, discipline, it means learner. So you will be those that learn from me. Okay, I can't stress enough that the Lord said, abiding in him, let his words abide in you, and the Father's glorified by all that fruit, so you will be those that learn from me. Can you see it? Can you see that as Christians, we have no right to sit on our, our rear ends and not bear fruit for the Lord? Can you see that's the wrong thing to do when you're a believer? If God has called you to something, 
You're supposed to get up and do it. I don't care if it's the prophetic. I don't care if it's the, if it's the apostolic. If it's the evangelical. I don't care what it is. If God has called you to do something, you are supposed to get up and do it. That is your place in the body of Christ. No matter what it is. Teaching, being a bishop, being a deacon, uh, or you might have uh, gifts of leadership. You might be called to an office in the world, like a superintendent, a school principal, or alderman, a congressman. You might be an entrepreneur. You might be in the creative arts. Uh, you might be a farmer. You might be uh, an architect. It doesn't matter. If God has called you to do something, you're supposed to get up and do it. Okay? So let me give you the prophetic word. Let me release this prophetic word. Here it is. For thus saith the Lord, For behold, my people, I am the bridegroom, and I have come. I am ready to move forward with those that are ready to go with me. You are in the ninth month. That means it's time for fruitfulness. It's time for you to bear fruit as never before. Therefore, my people, I release unto you a spirit of fruitfulness. For I am the God of Abraham. All I have to do to bring life forth is to blow my breath on it. Behold, yea, even this day, you shall be inspired with new ideas, new books, new music, a desire to travel and see the nations, a desire to mentor young people, a desire to go back to school and to love again. For I declare unto you, sons of men, that dry bones can indeed live if I, the Lord, blow on them. So hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and receive my spirit of fruitfulness and I will blow your mind with all the fruit and harvest I will cause to come into your life, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow. I receive every word of that. I'm excited about what the Holy Ghost has to say. The Lord said he's here, he's ready to go. In September, it's the ninth month. I told you when September came, there's going to be some new stuff. And the Lord said he's about to take our fruitfulness up to a level that we haven't even seen before because he's going to blow his holy breath on it. And blowing his breath on Abraham is what Abraham made Abraham receive strength to conceive a son. And when he blew on the valley of dry bones, he blew on all them skeletons in front of Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel to prophesy to him. And Ezekiel saw the sinews and the muscles and everything come on them dry bones and them dry bones lived. Okay, because God is able. And what that means is that he's going to breathe on you in September and inspire you with new things, new ideas, new stuff that you never even thought of. He's going to take your fruitfulness up to a level that you never imagined. So remember I told you all summer long to be sure that when September hit, you were ready to go. Remember I told you all summer long to be sure that you got all your August work done in August because when September hit, it was going to be something new. Hey, Mary, God bless you. How are you? Uh, or it was going to be something new. And now God is ready to breathe his divine breath on us and increase our fruitfulness to a whole new level. And I am ready. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what the new inspiration of the Lord brings. That also means new relationships. It also means new networking. It means new open doors. It means new finances. It means new thoughts. It means that there's going to be a whole new season, like, like something is in bloom. Like if you've ever seen flowers in bloom, you, you see how beautiful they are. That's what your life is going to look like. Hmm. And I'm ready for it. All right. Amen and amen. All right. When you see me get to this part of the program, when you see me close, you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there's any more prophetic words, if there's um, any financial words, if there's any demons, unclean spirits need to be cast out, or if any physical healing needs to be take place, needs to, needs to take place. So that's what I, I'm doing when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues. Okay, so here we go. All right, <clears throat> the Lord is telling me what my pastor has been talking about all week. The Holy Ghost just told me to repeat. Second Chronicles 2020. So that's what I'm going to do. Because you hear me say it all the time. If the Holy Ghost don't say nothing, I ain't saying nothing. So the Holy Ghost told me to say this. So I'm going to repeat it. Okay? Just like my pastor's been doing all week long. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles in the Old Testament. Okay? First and Second Samuel. First and Second Kings. First and Second Chronicles. Okay? 
2 Chronicles 20.20, 20, I'm reading out of the King James Version. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. There it is. So God is saying if we believe in him, we're going to be established. It's your time to be established. That's what my pastor preached about this morning. It's your time to be established. You know what that means? That means if, if in the past your life has been about wandering, it's time to put roots down. Okay? And you're not going to have to move anymore. I talked about that last week, remember? And then it says, believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. So when you hear the prophetic word. Also, I want to say like my pastor does, please share this video. Because when God releases a prophetic word, it needs to go all the way around the world. As many people as possible need to hear it. So please like and share this video so that others can receive the prophetic word uh, from the Spirit of God. So he said, believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Now let me tell you something I have learned about the Lord and something I have learned about the Holy Ghost and something I have learned about the kingdom. And here it is. When you have apostles and prophets all saying the same thing, <laughs> that's one way God is trying to emphasize to you to pay attention. Thank you, Mary. To pay attention to what's being said. In service this morning, when they were opening up the service, the prophetess that opens the service was talking about fresh oil and being fruitful and being established. And then my pastor preached about being established. And then last week I talked about being established. And now, that's right, Second Chronicles 2020. And the Holy Ghost is talking about believe the prophets and we're going to prosper. So the Lord has been saying the same thing all week and saying the same thing all day. That's what September is supposed to be. It's supposed to be about those that are ready to go having establishment, fruitfulness, and prosperity. That message has been repeated over and over and over and over and over. And I know what that means when the Lord does that. When the Lord does that, that means he's trying to say, hear me, my children. Hear me, my people. Hear me. Okay? That's what that means. So those of you that have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, your wandering days are over. Your days of being scattered are over. Your days of being not focused are over. It's time for you to put down roots. What do trees do when they grow? Trees reach, reach way down in the ground. They reach way. That's why it's so hard to pull a tree up. Because the older that tree is and the taller that tree is, the deeper their roots go. God is saying that's what your life is going to look like. For the establishment part, you're going to reach down. But you're also going to reach up. That's where the fruitfulness comes in. You're going to reach up and bear fruit off them leaves. Okay? That's what September is about. The Lord has been saying it over and over and over and over and over. That means that we need to receive it. Okay? That means you got to get rid of your fear. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. It doesn't matter if 2019 has been rough for you up to this point. Because the Lord is saying now is the time for you to reach down and reach up. Establishment, fruitfulness, and prosperity. Establishment, fruitfulness, and prosperity. Establishment, fruitfulness, and prosperity. Okay, if I was in church, I would have made everybody do that with me. Because you have to do prophetic movement. Establishment, fruitfulness, and prosperity. That's what this month is about. Don't let September pass you by and we look up at the end of the month and you're still in the same place you are now. <laughs> okay? I'm taking, I'm, once again, I, I tell you all the time, I'm never preaching and teaching something that I'm not doing. So I'm taking full advantage of September. I want everything that the Lord has called me to do, and I know I have to do my part. My part is abiding in Christ and doing my work, putting some works behind my faith. I have to put forth my effort because the Holy Ghost is not going to till the ground and plant the seeds for me. The Holy Ghost is going to bless my crops, but I got to till the ground and plant the seed. I got to do my part. Okay, so don't let September pass you by because when the Lord says it's time to be established and be fruitful, that means that the heaven is open. That means that he sent the word and the grace and the anointing and the oil and all the resources necessary to make it possible. That also means that three months from now, if you didn't do it, that's not on Jesus. That's not on your pastor. That's not on any prophet you listen to. That's not on Jesus. That's not on the Holy Ghost. If December comes and you're not established, that's not their fault. Because <laughs> the Lord has been saying over and over and over again, now's the time. So I'm with it. <laughs> I'm with it. Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. 
All right, as always, it's an honor and a privilege to come before you and release the word of God. You hear me say it all the time. It's a privilege to serve God. Okay, it's an honor to serve God. To be called of God and to serve God in any capacity is an honor. Okay, because he created us in his image to glorify him. That's the only reason everything exists is to glorify him. And when he gives you a chance to work in his kingdom, when he gives you a chance to know him, when he gives you a chance to serve him, that's the highest honor possible. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be a part of the kingdom of God. I'm grateful to be a prophet. I'm grateful to flow in the prophetic and in the teaching. I'm grateful. And I say that because I want those of you looking at me to rejoice in your gifts and to develop your gifts and to do what God has called you to do because it's truly an honor. It's truly an honor. You can't do anything better with your life than obey Jesus. If you want to find the highest path, that path is obedience to Jesus Christ. That's the highest path. Okay, Sally. All right. Trying to interrupt me. You know, I'm rebuking them phone calls. We're going to pray for Sally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come uh, before you for Sally, oh God, for a prayer for employment, oh God, that you would open the door for her to find the job and the career that you want her to have. Okay, Sally, the Lord has given me this prophetic word for you. God is saying that he wants you to hang in there even if there are tough times. He's given you a vision. And God is saying to you, Sally, that he wants you to live out that vision. He wants you to give birth to what he's put inside of you to give birth to. But just like any ministry, any entrepreneurship, any endeavor, there's tough times. And sometimes when you're first starting out trying to get it established, that's the hardest time. But God is saying he wants you to hang in there and do what he's telling you to do. He will repeat the vision to you. He will make the vision plain and make it clear to you, but he wants you to hang in there and do, excuse me, do what he's telling you to do. And God is going to lead you and guide you in small details. But, but I see that there is something great he wants you to give birth to. God does not want you to give up on that dream, Sally. He wants you to go forward and do what he's calling you to do. And remember, sometimes that means you have to do things that no one's ever done before. That means whatever you're doing is not going to look like anything else. And that's many times where we get afraid because, because we say, anybody done this before and blah, 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 blah. Sometimes that's on purpose. Sometimes you're called to pioneer things. Okay? The Lord is the one, for example, that first showed us how to cast out demons. The devil's all in the Old Testament, but the Lord showed us how to call demons by their name and how to cast them out because the Lord pioneered deliverance the way we understand it now. Do you see what I mean? So, so there's many times, you know, Jesus' mama, Mary, was pregnant out of wedlock as a young girl. That's how the Messiah came into the world. Okay, Mary's putting her life in her hands, being pregnant, knowing that it wasn't Joseph's baby because Joseph could have killed her. Joseph... Not, you know, that's not the right thing to do, but according to the custom of the day, if she was unfaithful as his betrothed, Joseph could have dragged Mary to the middle of town, put her in the ground, and stoned her until she died. And everybody would have said amen, because it, it looked like she cheated on Joseph. So the point I'm trying to make is that, that following God requires courage, because you have to take chances. Okay, you gotta you got to jump on out there. Okay, so... So if God is calling you to do that, God is saying he wants you to stay with it. All right? Amen, amen. Any other prayer requests? Put them on the screen. <clears throat> Any other prayer requests? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because uh, that happens many times. You study anybody's life in the Bible, man. They were Anybody that was walking with God was on the cutting edge. Remember that when David killed Goliath, Goliath had been challenging the armies of Israel for over a month. They were out there for 40 days, and all them grown men, all them trained soldiers were so afraid they wouldn't fight him. So here comes a shepherd boy with a slingshot, and he's the one that killed him. Why? Because David went up against Goliath in the name of the Lord, and he said it before he did it. Okay? So that's what I mean. It's very common when you study the scriptures. When you find people that are walking with God that are just out there, just out there, Abraham was a 75-year-old man when God first called him, and he was 100 years old before he had Isaac. Praying for right, okay, Mary, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for right alignment, relocation, that you 
relocated that you align her inside God let every bone and joint and muscle and tendon and ligament be lined up to give her strength and align her outside of God that wherever she's supposed to live and wherever she's supposed to be that you lead her and guide her as a good shepherd and show her the place you brought her to in Jesus name we pray and believe it amen amen and amen <clears throat> So I'm super excited about September. Like I said, I'm taking full advantage of it. I strongly encourage you uh, to do the same because when the year ends, I want to have all that fruit going. All the fruit that the Lord has been promising and talking about all summer is here now. So I want to take advantage of it. All right. All right. Amen. God bless. Uh, that's our time for today. So remember, I am on. You're, you're welcome, Mary. God bless. I am on every Sunday. 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm going to do like my pastor. I'm going to say, please like and share, because when the Spirit of God releases a prophetic word, as many people as possible need to hear it so that we can receive what it is that the Lord is saying. Okay? So thanks uh, to those of you that watch me live, and thanks, God bless you, to those of you that are watching me on the replay. So I'll be back next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and then I'll be back on the second Thursday, I do a series called No More Genies. So this month, that is Thursday the 12th. Okay, so that's a week from this Thursday. A week from this Thursday at 7 p.m., I do a series called No More Genies, where we get rid of our genie concept of God, and we get into actual biblical concept of God by studying what the Word actually says. Okay? Amen. God bless you. So I'll see you same time next week. And uh, I appreciate you. I love you with the love of Christ. And remember, time to be established, reach down, fruitfulness and prosperity, reach up. God bless.